Hello, amazing grassers. What is up? I am gonna hang here for a couple minutes until, hey everyone who's joining, until people start joining. What's up, please, where are you from? What are you up to? What is your favorite plant? Um, I, if you don't know me, I am Talia. I am the author of Party in Your Plants. I think this is gonna look backwards for you, but Party in Your Plants, that's the name of the game. That's what we're gonna be talking about. Norway, wow, love this product. Yes, I love Amazing Grass. Manhattan, I also live in Manhattan half of the time. Um, yeah, where are you all from? Inwood, awesome. Hey, hey, hey. So again, I'm Talia and I am the author of the brand new best-selling book, Party in Your Plants. And we are going to be chatting today, A, about how much I personally love Amazing Grass. And it sounds like a lot of you personally love Amazing Grass too. So I'm just going to be preaching to the choir and I'd love you to preach on back to me. Um, Texas, wow, must be hot. Ooh, Brazil, that's awesome. You guys are from such cool places, although hot places, actually. Um, SoCal, yeah, everyone's in hot, hot, steamy places. Ooh, the Adirondacks, yeah, the real upstate. That's awesome. That's really, really great. I love the Adirondacks, so beautiful. So I, again, I'm just gonna, you know, kind of hang, yeah, love myself some amazing grass. So what are your guys' favorite amazing grass products? I wanna talk to you about mine for a second, and then I wanna tell you about uh, one of my favorite recipes from my brand new book, Party in Your Plants, that I will be making this weekend for Father's Day. Someone's from Russia, Gregory, hey, wow, that's, far away from where I am. That's why I love, I love being live, it's so cool. So I just wanna tell you a little love story about me Jeez. <laughs> and the grass, when I got hooked on the grass. Ooh, oh my God, you guys love such good ones. The orange turmeric tablets. I saw someone else loves the wheatgrass powder. That's awesome because what's amazing about amazing grass, it's not only how easy it is, Oh my God, yes! Wait, Sydney, I assume that's your name, cause Sid, tell you I got my green superfood and tried your AM drink for the first time this morning! That's amazing, perfect timing, Sydney, cause I'm gonna show you how I make my morning drink. So my little love story here is that, I don't know, like, I wanna say six, seven, eight years ago, I, I saw this, this guy, it was branded differently, um, at the time, they've updated it since, but yeah, the watermelon line. I saw this, this guy in the store and I was going on a trip and I, I wanted a way to make sure that while on the road, I could get my plants on because if you're here, I assume you know and believe and have experienced firsthand, right? The amazing, this is why their name is so perfect because you can just roll it off the tongue, the amazing benefits of eating plants, right? And what that energy, what that energy does to you and, and how alive it makes you feel. And it's so easy to get hooked on that. And, and if it's not easy for you, let me just say, that's what I've written my book about. That's what my whole business, I have a podcast called The Party in My Plants Podcast, where I have almost 200 episodes of, uh, dedicated to the idea of how to make healthy living easier and less sucky. Because my, my whole spiel is I wanna help you take the hell out of healthy living. And my book, again, Party in Your Plants, is 100 plus plant-based recipes and problem-solving strategies to help you eat healthier without hating your life. So talk about not hating your life, right? When I saw this guy in the store and I um, purchased the individual packets at the time because I was going on a trip, I was just mind blown at how tasty getting my plant party on and um, could be on, on a plane, could be on a trip, could be anywhere without having a juicer or having a juice uh, bar near me or having a smoothie or whatever. And I've just been, been hooked ever since. And I started adding Amazing Grass, the specifically, I'm the number one fan, 
try to outfan me right now, you won't do it, of um, their Energizer Greens. So that just means they add a little yerba mate. I mean, we all know that plants and greens are energizing in and of itself, right? That's the amazing, amazing power of pumping your body with the plants or partying in your plants, right? But um, <clears throat> I love, yes, your junk food loving boyfriend will love not like love my recipes. Literally, the book is chock full of direct quotes from recipe testers whose reluctant, let's just say, um, spouses, partners, fiancés, boyfriends, wives, um, loved the recipes. And I literally put them in the book, which is Party in Your Plants, um, everywhere as like healthy eating sucks. And then it like has a line over the sucks. And then it's a quote that kind of rebuttals, not kind of, aggressively rebuttals the idea that healthy eating sucks. So what I'm going to be making with you today, and I promise I will get back to my love affair and my morning drink um, where I use the love affair in. But um, what we're going to be making today, what I'm going to be making for you in just a second is my crisp. And I'm so excited. I'm making it today with strawberries and rhubarb. Yes, my energy is giving you energy. That's what I'm here for. Just the Energizer Bunny. Plus, this doesn't this doesn't hurt the energy. No, I didn't have any yet. Well, I had it this morning and it's worn off. But okay, so back to that. We'll get back to the book. Um, so I love how with these greens specifically, they add some matcha and yerba mate to give me a little boost because I do drink this instead of coffee in the morning. I'm not a coffee drinker. I don't like the flavor. I wish I liked the flavor. I actually don't wish I liked the flavor. I, I think life is fine without coffee. Um, that's okay if you don't like rhubarb. Actually, in the book, it, um, it, the recipe calls for any combination of berries. You just want five cups of really any fruit. So you can make it with apples in the fall. You can make it with uh, peaches. You can make it with just blueberries or strawberries or a combo. So it's just about five cups of frutas. That is frutas. And um, so we had rhubarb nearby and straws. And my husband, let me tell you, I think he loves rhubarb more than me. All right, it's out there. Maybe we should see someone about this problem, but um, he lights up more when rhubarb enters the house than, um, than when I do. Hmm. No, I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so I was already drinking this morning drink that I'm gonna show you how to make because it is like, it is by far, besides my black bean brownies, the number one uh, hit of my recipes. And I think that's because I talk about it all the time because it's really, 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 mm, like really helped my stomach. And, and my whole story is that I came, I came into the plants because I, I struggled with my health for many, many years. Growing up, I had eight years where I sought out every healer. Uh, imagine, multiple gastroenterologists, um, naturopathic doctors, nutritionists, dietitians, chiropractors, acupuncturists, hypnotherapists, everyone. And the most I got was U of I BS, which just means kind of no offense, but like BS. Uh, it's like a life sentence, like good luck, your stomach hurts. We don't know what caused it, but like, bye, good luck. And I felt crappy all the time. And I knew I had this energy potential inside me. I knew, thank you. I knew I had, um, the ability to live a full, vibrant life, but I wasn't because I was being weighed down by my, my chronic illness. And long story short, which you can read all about in my book, um, Party in Your Plants, I stumbled one day uh, on a smoothie, a plant-packed smoothie that I consumed and was the first thing in over eight years that made me feel good, made me feel energized, made me feel awesome. And I never looked back, but at the time, this was in 2008, at the time in 2008, smoothieing and planting and eating veganly or plantally was not the norm. It was not accessible. It was not doable. It was very weird. It made me a, uh, a hermit because I was in college at the time and all my peers were out there doing keg stands and taking shots and I was in my apartment juicing kale and dehydrating more kale. Um, and so it really made me, yeah. Have you guys had that experience where it just, it really compromised my social life and my happiness. And I graduated school, went out into the world with, with this like, you know, 
choice. I, I felt like I could either choose my health or my happiness. And I didn't think it made any sense to be able to either choose to go to fun tailgates and parties and, you know, date with people or just be in my dorm, my room, my apartment, my home, freaking eating plants. Like, I didn't think that it made sense that you had to choose one or the other. I, I, I assumed, maybe you assume this too, that like eating plants and taking care of yourself is supposed to support the other, right? Isn't it supposed to make the other better? Like enhance your life, give you the energy to go out and date and party when it's safe and do all the stuff you want. So that is what I spent the next seven years um, mastering and figuring out. And so my book, Party in Your Plants, is all about exactly how to do that. So the book is not divided by breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack. It's divided by like what to make. Literally the recipe I'm gonna make with you today, but my crisp is from the section, what to make when you're going to a potluck with folks you don't know very well. And the whole book is divided into real life situations with plant packed recipes that can be, thank you so much, that can be adjusted um, if you do live with a meat eater, no problem. They can add chicken, they can add whatever to it. If you don't eat that, then don't add it. So it can be adjusted to please even the pickiest uh, of peeps. And it's all, you know, just amazing comfort food because that's the only way I like to cook. You know, just comfort, comfort AF. Okay, so um, yes, so that's to say that I was already making this drink for a while before I added my amazing grass to it and the reason I make it is it's, I'll show you, it's literally just 10 ounces of water, which I already put in here, and I add, and I travel with this. I mean, we, for our honeymoon, went on a safari and I literally brought apple cider vinegar in a <laughs> little travel thingy um, to Botswana. And they actually <laughs> confiscated it They're going through security. They're like, what the hell is this? And I was like, it's my medicine. I need that, it's my medicine. And it, that's how I, I feel. I have consumed two tablespoons, as you'll see, let me get my, oh, here's a tablespoon measure. Two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar in 10 ounces of water every single morning for over six years and it is just like magic for my stomach. And then I add, well, amazing, I mean, apple cider vinegar, in, in case you don't know, is um, it's a fermented probiotic rich vinegar. And a little, obviously it's vinegar, it goes a long way. So I usually do just two heaping tablespoons, I heap them, but if you're starting out, don't heap them. Um, uh, in water and it's just it's a delight it's great for your skin it detoxes you it pr pumps you with probiotics it alkalines your body it helps to poop two thumbs up for poop um it really helps with your digestion it helps with your immune system just like all the things that you want just like it happens it's great so I highly suggest that. And then so I do that in 10 ounces of water. And then every morning without freaking fail, I add a scoop. And I used to heap my scoops, but then I wouldn't get as many scoops. Um, you can do vinegar instead of lemon water. I personally don't love doing lemon water. Um, I just love, my body just loves apple cider vinegar. Lemon water tends to make me randomly feel bloated and kind of weird. Um, apple cider vinegar just... Mm, you know, it's just one of those things. So try it out, listen to your body, see how it feels. So then I just add a table or the whole scoop of their um, greens powder. And if I'm traveling, I'll do some of the tablets. Like you guys said you love, I love the tablets, just pop one in and we good to go. Um, I could add maybe sometimes a splash of coconut water to sweeten it up or even a little dash of stevia if it's not um, sweetened enough or you could do like a pineapple juice or something to give it just a little bit of sweetness. But that's what I drink every morning and I actually use that as my pre-workout because I, I work out in the morning. So the uh, Energizer Bunnies, <laughs> AKA Matcha, hey everyone, and um, Yerba Mate really does it. So they have a bajillion flavored green powders. Yes, I have that on an empty stomach for sure. First thing I put in my bod. You know, some people do their coffee. Yeah, monk fruit drops, perfect. Yes, I never, I don't do monk fruit enough, but like I have their, I, I use it as um, maple syrup when I'm monk fruit maple syrup. Yes, they make a bajillion amazing grass, makes a bajillion amazing 
um, greens powders in every flavor. I love their tangerine one. I love, I lit, I, it, I love it. I love it. I love it. So another thing I love is my book, Party in Your Plants, and this recipe that I'm going to make with you right now. So this recipe is my crisp. And it's funny because in my book, I write about um, how uh, for my oatmeal cookie recipe, I write about how um, I basically realized I was marrying my father when I learned that he is obsessed with oatmeal raisin cookies as much as my father is. And it was this funny little bit. In case you, you are just joining us, I am Talia Pollock. I wrote the book Party in Your Plants and I'm the host of the Party in My Plants podcast. And I'm a former comedian, so a lot of what I do is make eating plants as fun as a party. And I, and I want to do that so that when you eat the plants, you reap the benefits and your life becomes as fun as a party. That's, that's the whole thing. And, and a lot of people ask me about my food philosophy, right? My, like, what, what is your food philosophy? And to that, it's very simple. And I, I would really encourage you to adopt this right now, five minutes ago, yesterday, okay? I bet you might already be if you're an enthusiast of Amazing Grass. I just want you to eat more plants than you eat crap. That's it. That's all I tell people. You don't have to go vegan. You don't have to do paleo. You don't have to go vegetarian. You don't do anything like that. Just simply on every day, meal, week, year, just average out more plants than crap. Crap being chemical, refined artificial and processed food. That's it. That, oh my God, I'm loving all the hearts. So many hearts, woo woo, so many hearts. Um, that's all that matters. That's all you have to do. That's all that I care to um, impose upon you. That's, it, it's all about low stress. You know, one of my, one of my things and what I also want to impart on you is don't eat your Brussels with a bitch face. <laughs> Sorry if there's kids watching. Bad word. Um, that's that's one of my my core philosophies is helping you eat your plants with a smile and not season your salads with your tears because hey Hannah that um, that stress is worse for you than than the Cheetos that stress is worth worse for you than anything and that again really is why I freaking love this and you guys were asking what I was using I use the watermelon energy grains but also that's you know if if I don't want the extra caffeine I love their tangerine yes more plants than junk I love their tangerine that's for um, immunity and I mean all their greens are incredibly alkalining and um, detoxifying and energizing and they're like one scoop of this replaces one to two servings of your plants. So they're a perfect way to just slide some more plants into your body without anyone being the wiser, right? Or when you're traveling, which I mean, we're not really doing much of right now, but maybe you're doing road trips, maybe you're camping in your backyard. <laughs> um, and again, my book and, and everything that I do is aimed to help you eat those plants in the reality that is your life. I do not believe in you rearranging your cool life to accommodate the plants. I want the plants to slide on in to your life and enhance it. I don't need you to spend all your time in the kitchen. And so that's why um, my recipes, as you'll see, if I stop talking and freaking make the recipe, shall I? Um, that's how you'll, you'll see why, incredibly, why I make my recipes so incredibly simple. So because I don't want you to spend time in your kitchen. I want you to be out living, reaping the benefits of the plants. Am I right? Give me a high five or a love heart thingy um, if you're, you're with me. Okay, so I'm gonna be, ha yeah, lots of hearts. So I'm gonna be, uh, <laughs> Betty Crocker got me during quarantine, need a refresh. Yes, 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 yes. It's time to put the plants in your bod. I mean, it is summer. Where are you, uh, Maggie? Where are you somewhere? Summary, yes, Hannah, I use the Watermelon Energy Greens Powder. That's just my personal one um, that I make in my daily apple cider vinegar drink. But um, I do love, let me, hold on, hold that thought. Let's see what else I have in my, my fridge. Yeah, I have, um, these two ones are great also. The uh, Immunity one that's tangerine. I love this one. The taste is so good. It's tangerine -y. And then this one's great too. Just their, their regular Simply Pure. Just 
you know, pop that in. I also am a huge fan of their tablets. Okay, we all know I love Amazing Grass. Amazing Grass is great, but also amazing is this crisp that I should make for you now. Okay, so let's let's focus on that. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna be halving this recipe because I'm gonna be making it again this weekend for Father's Day. Because like I was saying, I wrote in the book about how my oatmeal cookies are what alerted me that my husband was basically my father in, in their food tastes. Um, but it turns out that they both love crisps if, if as much if not more than they love um, oatmeal cookies. So this might as well have been another husband and father weird Freudian recipe. Okay, so... The recipe calls for in one bowl, separate, um, five cups of fruit. And again, the whole thing is to make healthy eating not suck, right? Not hard, not challenging, not sucky. So I just say fruit. You could do berries, you could do peaches, you could do apples, you could do half and half, you could do different fractions. I'm not good at math. Um, you could do whatever you want. It's about simple, simple and fresh and planty. So I did half strawberries and half rhubarb, and that's what we're playing with right now. So over that, I ask that you add two tablespoons of coconut sugar on top. Let me rinse this because I used it for the apple cider. Um, but I'm just going to do, <laughs> I'm going to do one tablespoon because I have the recipe. So I'm curious, as I'm cooking, what are some of your guys' biggest challenges right now with healthy eating? I mean, are you completely fed up with cooking? Are you enjoying it? Did you find a new love? Are you over Betty Crockery? Are you over getting deliverying? Like, what do you, um, where are you at? I'm really curious. So I just added a tablespoon of coconut sugar and I am going to set these friends aside for now. I'm going to get another large bowl, bear with me, over here. Actually, it doesn't have to be that large because I'm halving it. And I'm oh, so tired of doing dishes. Preach, if I could press the like button down here, I would. Um, yes, lots of dishes. But the good thing about dishes is that it's the perfect opportunity to listen to a podcast. That is what I do every time. Like, I don't think I'm capable at this point of doing dishes without listening to a podcast. I just don't, I don't think I have the skill set to wash without headphones on my head listening to something. So um, not to like shamelessly plug my show, but I do have a podcast <laughs> called The Party in My Plants Podcast. So um, yeah. <laughs> you could listen to that. I just got a notification. I'm scared. I just got a notification that I'm five minutes left to my Instagram limits. Obviously, don't we all set limits for ourselves today? So if for whatever reason, reason that kicks me off, I will be back. I hope it doesn't. I really, I don't know how to change that right now, but I really hope it doesn't kick me off. Okay. Um, so in this bowl, I'm going to add rolled oats. Okay, wait, I'm seeing cooking break every four or five days. Yeah, I agree. Every few days, we're, or every like four or five days. Um, yeah, don't mind me while I just run around. Oh, I just thought these were rolled oats. Why did no one call me out on that, right? Um, loving this recipe, great. Indulgent treats, hard to get plant-based. Good, Healthy Indulgent Things is the name of my game. I mean, I have black bean brownies in my book. I have blondies made from chickpeas. I have all sorts. I mean, I people ask me, so just so you know, I'm gonna keep interrupting myself. In this bowl, I am adding uh, half a cup of rolled oats because again, I'm halving the recipe. But um, people ask me all the time on podcasts and stuff like, do you eat dessert? Yeah, I eat dessert. I just consider dessert sweet food, <laughs> right? So if you're making dessert with real food, then it's not really dessert. It's just food that kind of slants in the sweet direction, right? So next is almond flour. I'm using actually oat flour right now because I've never made it with oat flour. And I'm just genuinely curious how it tastes. I've made it with almond flour a bajillion times. But I think, you know, a lot of people have nut allergies. And I wanted to see how it would work. And that's the other thing about this book. And also this kitchen. Fun fact, I debuted my book two months ago today on Good Morning America. 
from my kitchen because we were in quarantining already and everyone was social distancing. And instead of being able to go in the studio to film the segment, my husband filmed it for me on the iPad. And we did it live on FaceTime. So that was a fun, crazy, weird experience that like one second I was just standing here on Good Morning America and the next second, you know, I wasn't. It was really, really weird. But um, one of the things I talked about because it was a segment about how to eat well in a quarantine in our current reality and this was at the time was right early on when like there was no toilet paper or food on the shelves at all. So I talked a lot about doppelgangers, about using healthy doppelgangers, which what I mean is if you <clears throat> see a recipe that calls for kale and you only have frozen, use frozen. If a recipe calls for sweet potato and you only have butternut squash, use butternut squash. You know, if, if this recipe calls for almond flour and you have oat flour, for the most part, flowers are a little trickier, but for the most part, you can substitute. Maybe you add a little extra oil down the road, um, just in the recipe if it calls for, or just a little extra to compensate because almond flour is uh, more oily. But like, that's another way to just make healthy eating not suck, which is to just use these doppelgangers. Don't stress, don't run out if you're out of cinnamon. <laughs> You can do it without cinnamon. So just take the stress off because I think that's a huge barrier for people uh, when it go comes to eating healthier. I'm seeing a lot of you want to eat more plants. And I think taking the stress out of the equation is the way to do it. And in my book, I go through a lot of the most common stressors and I help you troubleshoot how to make that a thing in the past for you uniquely. It's pretty rad. Okay, so next up is pecans. And it calls the recipe calls for half a cup. I'm doing, do the math with me here, friends, a quarter cup because I'm halving the recipe. I'm so nervous it's gonna kick me off because of my Instagram limit. I really hope it doesn't. That would suck so much. And then I don't know if it would save, just I really hope it doesn't. I'm trying to be responsible, not use Instagram too much, but I hope that doesn't come to bite me in the butt. Does anyone else have Instagram and social media limits set up? Um, I know it's helpful for me, but I obviously extend it, you know, sometimes say like, mm, give me one more minute, <laughs> one more minute. So I'm just chopping some pecans right now or pecans, depending on how you want to say it. Yum. I can't tell if you can really see. Where's my thing? Awkward silence. Awkward son. Okay, okay, I extended the limit. It said Instagram's done and I said no screw you for the day. So we're good. <sighs> that was stressful. Okay, so we have our quarter cup of pecans going in here. So if you're just joining, just a quick recap. I'm Talia Pollock. I run Party In My Plants. I wrote Party In Your Plants and I am currently cooking a recipe, a crisp made with strawberries and rhubarb from my book from page 203. And in the book, it's called Very Good, Peachy Perfect, or Beyond Appealing, Appealing Apple, get it, uh, crisp. <laughs> and it's gluten-free and delicious full. So yay to that. Okay, so we have in here um, rolled oats, uh, oat flour, pecans, and now sea salt is our next victim. Do you hear our Tommy? That's my dog. All right, we got sea salt going on in. If you guys have any questions, um, again, we spoke earlier about my favorite product. I love Amazing Grasses, Amazing Grasses, especially their watermelon ones. And if you go to my website, partyinmyplants.com, you can see what I made earlier just now, which is my favorite way to consume Amazing Grasses, Amazing Greens. Um, and that is, if you just go on partyinmyplants.com and you type in, probably just amazing would take you there or apple cider vinegar or ACV. Any of those things would work for you. Okay, next up is cinnamon, which is a delight in this recipe. I'm kind of just gonna eyeball it because it's just for my taste, my taste pleasure anyway. Um, I also, for this one, love adding ginger. I think ginger goes great with the rhubarb situation. And fun little tree to reet, cardamom. 
I know you can't smell it. Can you smell? <laughs> I love cardamom. So I'm just adding cardamom on in there. Um, a little sprinkle, sprinkle. And um, now some coconut sugar coming in hot. Boop. Boop. Do you guys like coconut sugar? It's my favorite sugar to, to bake with. And um, it's just, it's delicious. Okay. And so coconut sugar and salt. Okay, great. Now the next thing I'm going to do is <clears throat> get down and dirty uh, and take off my rings and my hands are I'm coming in with some coconut oil so let me just get a spatula and I'm gonna mix this up so again in here in case you're just joining or you forgot or you're Jay Jay curious um, I have coconut sugar rolled oats oat flour pecans sea salt or pecans if that's how you roll sea salt cinnamon ginger cardamom and i'm about to add coconut oil you can also add uh coconut flakes if you please but it's in my pantry and i'm good so coconut oil i'm gonna do two tablespoons and now normally oh you're reading my book right now that's awesome where are you at so normally when you use coconut oil and thank you for buying it you want it to be melted. Like oftentimes recipes call for it to be melted. Not this time, although this is almost melted just because it's so hot. Um, this time you want it not melted and you're gonna go in with your hands, those clean hands and massage it and disperse it that way. Could I use honey instead of coconut sugar? I like them both, but I have honey right now in my pantry. I'm just thinking it's good yeah I think you could I mean it's I've never made it with a liquid sweetener I've only made it with dry it could change the texture slightly but I don't think it would change it that much if anything it might make it slightly crispier because as it bakes um, it'll it'll have more liquid to like you know bake with so it could be extra crispier of a crisp so I would say give it a shot that's the whole thing with doppelgangers, right? And at the end of the day, I mean, all this stuff just tastes so good together. All these plant foods, right? This non-processed, non-crap. So like, what's the worst that could happen? Could burn a little, just then use, use your nose and stop that from happening. So if you see here, it's becoming this like, kind of, kind of like oatmeal cookie vibes, like, a, like as if an oatmeal cookie crumbled. Maybe that's why my dad and husband love it so much. Because they love oatmeal cookies, epiphany. Okay, great. So that's happening. And now normally when I don't have company, I would, I would lick all my fingers, but I'm trying to be somewhat sanitary to the masses here. <laughs> okay, fine, how can I resist? Mm, mm, mm. That cardamom. Do you guys like cardamom? All right, I'm just gonna rinse one moment. Talk amongst yourselves. Just kidding. <laughs> awesome. Okay, great. So now all I'm going to do is bake it. I mean, that, that's as simple as the recipe is. Like that's, that's the whole, that's the whole jam, you guys. That's, that's, that's all you need to do to eat plants and in a delicious way. It does not have to be stressful in even the slightest even the slightest, that's it. So let me spritz the baking pan, baking thingy, boop, spritzed it, great. I did coconut oil spritz. And now just to remind you, excuse me, just to remind you in here is coconut sugar, strawberries and rhubarb. And again, this is my crisp on page 203. Strawberries, rhubarb, ew, smells so good, and coconut sugar. And I'm just gonna put that right on in. Yas to the yas. Mm. Yas to the yas, fresh frutas. Nice, good one. Good one, Talia. <laughs> Great. And now, I'm running around here. 
Now I'm gonna crumble on top. Crisp, crisp it on, crisp it on. Easy, done. Well, not done, because then I'm gonna bake it. So the last step, we'll be baking it. And unfortunately, I'm gonna have to leave you on a cliffhanger as far as the baking goes, because it does bake for 40 to 50 minutes. And usually it's 40, my oven, it's funny, I, I made my, my book in a totally different home. And so the cooking times actually have varied quite a bit. So that's a little lesson, a little life planty cooking hack for you to always use the best tool that you have when you're, when you're cooking. This thing, your nose. You know, if you're smelling something, that could mean it's done. So then, then use your eyes <laughs> and just don't stress. So I, I've loved connecting with you. This has been such a blast. And I wonder, do you have any questions? Is there anything, you know, I can answer for you? Are you down with the party in my plants philosophy? Just eat more plants than you do crap. And really, I'm a huge, huge enthusiast of amazing grasses. I'm so glad you enjoyed this. This was a delight for me. I haven't interfaced with humans in a, in a very long time nor have I put any makeup on my face. So uh, this is just a delight to feel human again. I haven't put on a scarf in a while. So I really appreciate you all being here. And again, if you want to pick up my book, it's where books are sold. And by pick up, I mean curbside pickup or online pickup. It's available wherever books are sold. Thank you, Jennifer. Oh, Jen, Jen. Um, I just put two and two together. Um, yeah, so the final step again is to put it in the oven. So. I would go do that, but uh, you don't need to see that. You have your own ovens to uh, put things into. Thank you so much. I don't wanna say bye. What do we do? Okay, come follow me at Party in My Plants and we'll keep this going. Thank you so much. Oh, I love that you do home staging. That's cool. Okay, I guess, well, thank you for ordering it. I don't know, do I just say bye? This is so, this was so fun. Um, yeah, so, Eat amazing grass, and by eat, I mean drink it. <laughs> and hang with me, because you. this was just a blast, and I'm, I'm honored to have shared this time with you, and maybe we'll do it again, again soon. So again, I'm Talia Pollock, Party in My Plants. My book is Party in Your Plants. My podcast is Party in My Plants podcast, and Amazing Grass is obviously was my first sponsor. They, they, I've just, I've eaten them up. I've stalked them. I've idolized them. I'm obsessed with them from my, my heart and soul and my body loves them. So I hope you do too. If you have any questions about what product you might love, I'm here. I mean, I will likely guide you to this. Um, it's my favorite, but I really, I love, I would go into my pantry and grab it, but their tablets are kick ass. Um, for traveling, I always have tablets in every bag and purse. I also always have stevia, just in case you never know. Um, these are some some things that just make eating more plants more of a party and, and less of a, a disaster, less sucky. And that's what this is all about. If eating plants is hard, you're not gonna do it and then you're not gonna reap the benefits. So between Amazing's book and this freaking crisp, which I cannot wait to dive into and I will post a photo of later on my account um, the finished product um, cheers to your your plant partying and with that I'm gonna have to cut myself off otherwise I'll stay here all day because you're all so fun and loving and I love all the hearts thank you for having me and um, we'll chat soon bye